Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, I'll be giving you a detailed overview of the direct edit tool found in Autodesk Inventor. If you want more easy to understand and practical content like this, made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out the other videos in the Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's Let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this direct edit tool. So in the 3D space in front of you, uh, you'll see that we have a T-slot frame that I imported as a step file from a distributor I like to use. And we're going to use this direct edit tool to modify various aspects of the geometry without needing any sort of history in the model. Now, what do I mean by history? So when a model doesn't have history, um, I'm essentially alluding to the fact that the model does not have specific sketch geometry uh, or any discernible features other than the solid body as a whole. So if I look at this model and look in my model browser, all I have is this entire solid body all is one piece. There's no extrusions, there's no hole features, there's none of that, okay? So this is what I mean when a model does not have history. So as an example, I have two identical models, except that this one has all of the history here in the model browser. So you've got all of the features associated with this model. If I go to this version of it, all we have is a solid body. Now, the nice thing about the direct edit tool is we can actually manipulate the solid body without requiring any of that history um, that I showed you in the previous model. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go under the modify section and click on direct. And now you'll see we have this menu that pops up and allows us to manipulate some of these features. So we'll go ahead and start with this little tab on the left. So if you click and drag this, um, this will allow you to move around this menu. Now, um, if you have a specific place that you'd like to leave these types of menus that sort of float around in space, what you can do is you can pin it somewhere along your workspace. So I like to pin mine sort of right here on the right side. Um, I like to keep it close to the piece that I'm working on. So I'll just move it right here. And then you go to this drop down box, click it, and then you can pin the toolbar in this position. Of course, you can click and drag it and move it to a different position. But essentially what this does is if I were to exit out of this tool and go back in, it will pop up in the same exact spot that I had it before. So I like to pin this in my workspace so I'm not constantly moving around when I uh, jump in and out of this command. So that's available to you. And then we can also auto fade this uh, toolbar. So when I'm not moused over that area, all of that extra selection info fades away so it clears up my workspace a little bit. Um, and then when I hover over it, it reappears for me. So um, I usually don't like to do that. I, I like to leave that disabled, but this is a personal preference. Okay, so now moving along the top, we have our move command. The move command has a couple of different uses. So one use for this is we can actually select the front face of this and resize the bar in its entirety in one go. So I select that front face and then I can click and drag this arrow or I can type a value into this box. So let's say we want to take off two and a half inches from this bar. Um, we can do that. But of course, we'll need to put a negative sign because it is sensitive to the uh, axis direction. And there we go. We took off two and a half inches from the bar without having to create a sketch on that front face and then a cut feature using the extrude command. So really powerful tool. Another way we can use this move command is we can actually move the entire solid in 3D space all as a whole. So what I can do is I can go underneath this move tab to where it says faces and we'll click this little down arrow and select solids. And we'll pick up this entire solid and now we can actually translate this entire piece on any of the three axis directions as a whole. And then once I've got the uh, selection that I want, I can hit this little plus sign. And there we go. Now we've moved our part in 3D space. One thing I'd like to point out is that each individual sub feature within this command has a different set of options that are associated with it. So these are context specific options. Okay, so under the move command, as you've already seen, we can select um, either faces or solids. And then we also have access to automatic blending, preview mode, and so on and so forth. So as we go through this tutorial, we'll hit on each one of these individual options for you. Continuing through our move command, I wanna give you an overview of the automatic blending option. So I went ahead and disabled automatic blending for now, and I switch over to this model and in this model, I have an extruded boss with a fillet around this sharp edge to round it off. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually try to shorten this boss a little bit. So we're going to select this face 
and we're going to just drag this arrow downwards. OK, and I want you to notice something here. So when I drag it down and execute the command, you'll notice that it left the original fillet and it just doesn't look like we want it to. So um, that's because the automatic blending is off. So it doesn't know what to do with this originally tangent face uh, or this radius that was on that edge. So let's actually go back and try that again. So we'll go to direct and then we'll enable automatic blending this time, select this face and then drag that arrow down. And when we do that, you'll see that it auto updates this uh, extruded boss appropriately while maintaining that fillet around the edge. So this applies to any faces that are tangent to the face that you're trying to use. So if you're moving um, a series of features or solids or whatever that has a tangent face associated with that, you want to leave automatic blending on uh, 99 times out of 100. So anyways, um, that's automatic blending. Let's go ahead and take a look at the preview toggle. So currently it is toggled on, and I know that because we have a check mark in this box. So let's pick this front face and drag this arrow back to resize the bar. And you'll see that the bar is actively shortening as I drag it backwards on that axis. But if I disable the preview option, we lose out on that visual representation of that shorter bar. So um, just depending on whether or not you want to leave that preview on, that's available to you. Moving down to the locate option, what we want to go ahead and do is select our entities that we want to move. So we're going to select this hole here and this boss. OK, now you'll notice that this triad. So this three axis setup, which is called a triad, is centered concentrically to this inner hole. OK, so we can actually reposition the triad elsewhere in the model and use that as reference to then move this feature. So we'll go down to locate. And let's hover over this whole feature and uh, set that triad to snap to that. So we'll hover over it, left click, and then you'll notice that these faces are still blue. Um, and that's just indicating that these are still selected to be translated. And then I can come over to these arrows and I can actually click and drag and move this. And let's say we wanted to move this feature over by a quarter of an inch. So we can type in 0.250, hit enter, and there we go. We've moved this entire feature. So that includes the original boss, this hole that's cut into it, and this fillet at the bottom all in one move without any sort of history in this model. So look at this um, model browser. There's no history here other than the solid uh, body itself. So this is why this tool is so powerful. This next option allows us to control the orientation of the triad. So by default, it's set to local. So when I select this whole feature here, it aligns the triad locally to that feature. Now we can actually also align this with the origin if we want to do that. So you go to this little drop down and select world. And when we do that, you'll see that that vertical axis inverted so that it's aligned with this Y axis and the rest of our axis geometry here in the origin. OK, so that is what that command does for you. We can actually also align the triad using other bits of geometry in the model. So if we go over to this option here after you've made your selection, we can click on this field and then you can hover over various parts in your geometry or in your 3D model that realigns this feature for you. So let's say we want this triad aligned with this edge here. We can hover over the edge and then left click and then it'll realign that triad for us. And then we can go ahead and move our features about. Moving down, let's go ahead and take a look at the measure from option. So first, we're going to pick up this front face because I'm going to change the length of this bar. And now notice that it's measuring this delta based off of the original face position. But what I want is I want to actually reference this rear face so that I can pick up the overall bar length rather than how much I'm taking off of the bar. So I go down to measure from and I'm going to select this rear face. And when I do that, it's measuring to the back of this bar, or in other words, it's referencing the overall length of the bar, which is a better case for this design. So now I can resize this to whatever size I want, hit enter, and there we go. We've resized our bar on a better referenced face. Moving over to the right, we have our snap to option. And to show off this option, I went ahead and put a work plane or a reference plane in 3D space. And now we're going to go ahead and pick up our face of interest, which is this front one. And instead of clicking and dragging and moving this to the desired setting, what we can do is we can snap it to various entities. In this case, I'm going to snap it to this reference plane. Click on snap to and then select the entity that you want to snap this feature to. So I'm going to hover over the reference plane and left click. And there we go. Now it's snapped that move feature to that reference geometry. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the size tab. I'm in a different model now and I went ahead and clicked on the size tab here. So let's go ahead and pick up some different features and I'll show you how we can resize those accordingly. So um, let's say, for example, I want to resize this diameter here. I can click on that face and I can click and drag this arrow 
okay, and resize that accordingly. I can also go down here and specify how I want to resize it. So currently it's set to an offset. So this is an offset off of the original size. We can resize it based on a diameter. Okay, so we can select diameter and you'll see that it changes how it measures that, or we could set it to radius, okay? So uh, plenty of flexibility there for us. Now let's actually go back and resize a different feature. So let's say we wanna change this fillet radius here on this corner. What we can do is select this face, and then we can click and drag this arrow and we can change that fillet radius, okay? So you wanna be careful with this in this particular case because we have a little step here for a lap joint. And, um, in this case, we can't go too far on changing this fillet radius. So just make sure that you're minding the actual design of your part and its design intent so that you're not creating some um, abstract geometry that's going to break your model or just not uh, allow you to manufacture it. Like the move option, we also have the ability to toggle the preview mode on and off by clicking in this little checkbox here. OK, and then moving down, we have the reset operation button. If we click this, it just resets that sizing back to default. So I can go ahead and change that as needed. Moving over to the right, we can actually rescale an entire solid all in one go. So what we do is we left click on the solid and by default, it's set to a uniform scaling. So that means that regardless of which axis direction I select, it uniformly scales the part in all three axis directions. And of course, you can type in your scaling factor here if you'd like to do so. Now we can actually open up this drop down box and select non uniform and scale this part independently in each axis direction. So I can scale the Z direction, the X direction and so on and so forth independently. We also have the ability to toggle the preview mode on and off like the other commands by clicking in this box here. And then we can also relocate the triad location. So we can hover over various entities within our model and just left click there and we can relocate that triad. Now I can go ahead and set my scaling factor based on a feature dimension using the measuring tool. So I've selected my solid of interest and I've highlighted my original scale factor of one so that it can be replaced by my measured entity. So now I go to this right facing arrow, click measure, and then now I just pick an edge that I wanna match this scale factor to. So I'll just pick this edge here, okay? it's uh, Edge length is 1.127 inches, but I need to go ahead and delete the unit from this entry so that the software knows what to do with this as a scale factor. So I delete inches off of this and there we go. Now we have our new scale factor and then we can execute that command. Moving over to rotate, we're actually going to use this option to rotate this slot or this opening in this cover. So what I wanna do first is I want to sort of zoom in on this part and select the faces that I wanna rotate. And now I need to snap this triad to a different reference point because I don't wanna rotate it off of this side. I actually wanna rotate it off of the center point on this edge here. So I'm gonna hit locate and I'm gonna just drop it right there. Okay, and then now we just wanna pick up this node here that's on this plane so that we can rotate it in this direction. So we're gonna click and drag this node and let's go ahead and set a value of negative 22 degrees. And there we go. Now we have a rotation that we want and we're gonna hit that plus sign and there we go. We've created our rotated feature. We can also create a parallel relationship between our rotated feature and an other feature such as a work plane or another entity within your solid. So I went ahead and drew up this work plane that's 15 degrees tilted off of this front face. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up this front face and now we're gonna to go to snap parallel and select this reference plane. And when we do that, it angles that face parallel to that reference plane. Our final option is delete faces. So this is an extremely powerful tool in our toolbox because while we don't have the history in this model, we can actually eliminate features as if we did have the history there. So what do I mean exactly? Well, look at these filleted corners on this enclosure. Well, we don't have the actual fillet feature in our model browser, but guess what? We can remove these easily. So in our direct edit option, we go to delete and let's pick up these four filleted corners. Now that I picked up my four corners on my model, you'll notice that I get a little error message that pops up. And essentially this is because while I can remove these fillets here on the edges, I also need to remove the fillet up here on the edge. So let me go ahead and select all of those. Okay, and now that error message goes away and I can actually remove all of those faces. But let's take it a step further and remove this fillet along the top edge as well. Okay, and there we go. Now we can hit this plus sign and get rid of all of those features as if we had the history already in this model.
One final note I'd like to add is about the selection and deselection of various entities within your model without having to cancel out of the command altogether. So let's say, for example, I wanted to pick up this fillet, this fillet, and this fillet, but on my way to picking up this last one, I accidentally selected this entire face. Well, this applies to all of these commands within here. So let's say I wanted to delete those. Well, I don't want to delete the entire flat face on the bottom. What I can do is I can hold the control key and hover over the face that I want to deselect. While holding the control key, I'm going to press left click on my mouse and it will remove that selection as my entry. I can also go ahead and do that for these other ones. So if I hold control and hover over this fillet, It'll highlight in green. And then when I click on it, it removes that selection for me. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Part Creation Module, where I gave you an overview of the Direct Edit tool. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you work your way through these lessons. Also, before you watch the next video in the series, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will help you create the future you want for yourself. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to stop by and learn with me and I'll see you again soon.